Bun. Well good, well, good evening, everyone. The mic is fairly strong. Or am I speaking <laughs> too loud? All right. Um, again, welcome. Welcome um, to Tech Talk. And of course, today we have our Comtia, folks from Comtia, from Seattle. That's right. Uh, all right. And, and, and from Florida. And I'm from Kingston. <laughs> uh, First of all, we just just wanted to uh, note that we have an audience and we have a large number of persons online. And today what we'll do is that we'll take, take questions, not just only from the audience, but also from the viewers online. And, and so we're going to uh, begin. Uh, and so I just want to thank our team from Comtia for making this possible. And, you know, the, Comtia has been our partners for a, a very long time. Um, you know, over 12 years, I think I was trying to count it, and it's up over 12 years. Um, to my far right, of course, is um, Leonard Wadowitz, yeah. um, who is our, <laughs> well, he's a senior director of uh, business development in, in Latin America and the Caribbean. Can't forget the Caribbean. And of course, we have our special guest, um, Dr. James Tang. Mm -hmm. And of, of course, when I mentioned that James was an evangelist, folks wanted to know what religion, right? Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> so it's the IT religion, he's the chief, chief. Uh, <laughs> Evan, uh, IT evangelist at Comtia. So you'll learn a little more about these gentlemen, and um, you know, especially with Leonard. Leonard has been here for quite some time, and um, I will, I will just before I get Leonard coming on and stealing the entire show, <laughs> I might as well just mention, and uh, I have to look at my notes because my my memory is not as good as it used to be. Um, you know, I have to get, get some SD RAM. Uh, well, in terms of, as I said, the relationship between uh, between Comtia and Vector has as as has been over a, a good period, or as I said, over 12 years, and the development in terms of us, meaning Vector, um, as a academic. Uh, or part of the education system. Uh, one, one can remember that um, certification, industrial certifications were kind of frowned on by, by, by the traditionalists. Um, but one of the things that we, we, we know about Vector, Vector is not the, the, the traditional. Vector came out of the IT industry. So that is where we started. And education uh, was a training, it's part of the training department of, of Vector Design. That was the name of the original company, started in 1984. And at that time, because we knew and we, we, we had the experience of IT and IT industry and IT services, we recognized that I, the certifications are what was very important um, in terms of demonstrating that you actually knew what you were doing and what you had to do. Um, and that just having a, a, a degree, as in the traditional sense, might have been good, and it's still good, 
in terms of if you if you get to a point and you want to let's say run make decisions at a higher level um, related to um, some especially those um, skills that we need the, the, you know those soft skills and so on um, and, and 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 trying to move a company you know even further so you know that's where a lot of um, um, persons in the business would be looking for persons to, to have a degree but having lived it myself in terms of trying to, to develop a career mm -hmm. I myself am, am similar to the model that we uh, that we actually um, uh, demonstrate and use in that I became a technician and I had to get certifications along the line and I needed to do something and be able to, to even keep motivating myself to continue. And, and so I didn't decide that I wanted to do a degree and that my degree was the first thing on my mind. Certifications were on, was on my mind. And, and so that's one of the things and that's the approach we have taken. And for those of you who, who are, might be potential students and uh, don't know much about um, Vector itself, our programs are, we intertwine our programs with certifications in terms of all of those other soft skills and all of these things. So when you leave after four years, you leave with a degree and you leave with the relevant certifications and so you don't have to return to get some of these basic certifications you already have them and 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 these are some of the things in terms of even how we go up about this and what makes our program unique uh, so today we're going to have um, Leonard speaking a lot more about the certifications because as you know the world has changed and continues to change at, at a rapid rate and, and, and Leonard will, will sort of fill you in more in terms of what, what is happening now in terms of the life of, of CompTIA and how it affects us. Alright, so without much ado, I'm going to turn this mic over to the, to the, to the, to the the, Florin, the, Flo the, the man from Florida, <laughs> and, and he's, he's going to um, talk a lot more about um, CompTIA, the certifications, and so on. And then, obviously, he will introduce this partner, uh, <laughs> you know, to, to, to take it um, even further. And just, just, just to note that from time to time, there will be questions, and um, we will... We'll, 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 from time to time, ask that the questions be answered. All right. So thanks, uh, and, 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 and welcome to Jamaica. Uh, espe especially, um, James, you are, you are, it's your first time. Yeah. And OK, and, and we'll, I hope you're, we are treating you well. You are indeed. All right. Uh, Great. So over to you now. Um, All right. Great. Thank you very much, Dr. Marr, and um, thank you uh, to the Vector team for letting us come and participate in this little activity. Um, as Dr. Marr said, he's known, we've known each other for over 12 years, and I've been in this position since 2009, which is 13 years. And what's really been interesting in my visits to Jamaica and I've been to Jamaica probably at least 40 times uh, since 2010, is it's changing. It really is changing. And the thing is, it's changing actually in the last two years. I don't know if I should thank COVID for this. <laughs> is the, uh, you know, what, what do they call it? Unintentional consequence? I think so. Yeah. yeah. But um, the, whole th the whole thing about certifications as Dr. Marr said, it was frowned on, and it was. I, I, I just gave up trying to talk to employers. Uh, the first two years, I talked to some of the bigger IT companies in Jamaica, and basically, they didn't want to hear it. They, they it j just like, yeah, no, that's fine. Sounds good. We know who you are. We'll call you when we need you. And that's pretty much the way it was left. And, and, um, we, and I'm just going to tell you, uh, tertiary institutions. Today, only two tertiary institutions um, actually are CompTIA partners, and, and Invector is really the only one that combines the 
uh, the certifications into a whole I don't, I, I don't like the word career, but in a whole life skill um, program. So when, when people leave, they can literally knock on the door, walk in, sit at their desk, uh, wherever they're working, and do the job. It's not another six months to one year of skill, to, you know, shadowing somebody. It's none of that. Because you have the skills and you can do it, and an employer feels comfortable that that uh, that person they hired from Vector, because in addition to the the unique type of of, of curriculum and uh, program that they have here, on top of that, they have globally recognized certifications, CompTIA being a, a large set of those, which which are validations of skills, because without uh, the degree is good. Dr. Mar touched on that. It's good. There's nothing wrong with it. But if you uh, degrees don't travel, certifications travel. They're they're almost like uh, they're they're your passport to literally any country in the world because anybody will recognize a certification. And unfortunately, you don't know my university. If I tell you I, I, I received my BA from DePaul and Greencastle, Indiana, you're going to sit here and, and, you know, heaven knows what's going through your head. Uh, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean I'm qualified to work for you. It means absolutely nothing. So uh, that's what certifications bring to the table. And as I said, the first 10 years coming here, literally, uh, knocking, I'm going to tell you, knocking my head against the wall. Uh, and, and as I spoke with em employers of different sizes, different tertiary institutions, and something happened, you know, and, 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 um, and I think Dr. Marr is, is seeing it too. This trip this week in Jamaica, we spoke with four employers. Was it four or three? Yeah, four, yeah, four employers. That's more employers that I've spoken with in 10 years. I am not kidding you. And I spoke with four employers who every one of them said, CompTIA is the program. It has, it's going to be CompTIA. We know who you are and we know this is what we want. I, 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 I was doing this. Where am I? Where am I? I thought there's a, 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 a tear in the space-time continuum. I had never heard that in Jamaica. And, and they're serious, because you know why? There aren't enough skilled people on this island, and, the, and Jamaica isn't unique, it's the whole world. That's right. It is the whole world. It's funny because uh, I just finished a tour. Uh, I was in India. Uh, and then I was in uh, uh, Singapore and Thailand in similar discussions. For example, this uh, yesterday we were talking with uh, the, the leader of Just Search, right? The, the incident response yep. team. And it was a very similar discussion as to what I had in Thailand with the leader of the incident response team right. there. They, they're looking for people. They need it. And I've been having this conversation. I've had CEO summits in Mexico, Costa Rica. Uh, I've had two in Brazil with CEOs from some of the largest IT consulting companies in Brazil. And they all say, we cannot find skilled people. But on the other side of that, they don't have a plan. No one has a plan. Okay, what's your budget for uh, uh, for um, employee development? Oh, we don't have a budget. Yeah, they don't know. Yeah, no one has a budget, and that's the problem. Coming into this year, no one had a plan, and you know the governments don't have the plans. I'm sorry, they don't. They they say they do, but they don't. Let's just get real. Um, employers. We know they don't have plans, and basically many educational institutions, tertiary and secondary, yes, there's some IT, yes, there is. We were quite impressed with the three girls, uh, with the three high schools we visited. The high schools. We were quite impressed, mm -hmm. but still they don't have the skills that they need to walk into a data center and do the job. They don't have those skills, and, and something has changed. And, and Dr. Marr and I have been talking over the last uh, two years. We took advantage of COVID. <laughs> we had a lot of time to kill. And, and, and we're starting to see some momentum. There's a change. So if you're an individual, what I'm going to tell you is, if you aren't thinking about getting a certification of any kind, and of course I'm going to tell you, you really, CompTIA is a key part of it because there is no program like CompTIA if you want to be an IT and cybersecurity professional. But if you aren't thinking certification, the train's going to pass you by because it's changing here. 
in Brazil, it changed about two years ago. If you don't have a CompTIA uh, certification in Brazil, you will not get a good, a higher paying IT job. And it started, I'm seeing it. It, it, what I see now happening here is what I saw in Brazil 18 months ago. It's the same thing. Let's talk, so, about, let's talk about that change for a second. You said there's been a change. I think part of it is, is because of COVID. For example, we are have decided as societies, no matter where we are, because I've seen this worldwide, that, um, we're using technology more deeply than ever before. You know what I'm trying to say? I, you, know, you mentioned Zoom or MS Teams, whatever. The fact that we're using technology more to stay in business or for governments to stay on track of their mission, right? right. Because we are using that technology more than ever before, we need people with those skills. But I think it, you've got a great point. Uh, we can't just focus on pointing the finger at the unskilled worker. Because uh, if you point a finger, what's the old story? If you point a finger, there's, there's four pointing back at you. And I think corporations are kind of realizing we've got to get a plan, right? Well, and now, it's competitive. Now it's all about, first of all, individual competitiveness. Everybody, you want to get a better job, right? You want to get a better salary. And you, every employer, would, how many are employers here in this audience? How many are employers? Employers? Employers. We have a few. All right. When you hire somebody, half of it. What are you going to bring to the table, right? That's the question. What value do you bring to my company? If there is no perceived value, the interview is over. And it's probably going to be a very short interview. And there are even companies that you don't even get the interview without the certification. That just opens the door. To the conversation. Yeah. yeah. And then on the other side, for the IT companies, it's a still competitiveness. Because now what's going to happen, if you don't do it, that company will. So they're going to be the ones that they can offer the higher level services <clears throat> and they can do what you can't do. And maybe you think you can compete by price for a while, but at the end of the day, what everybody knows in business, what deals you win by price, you lose by price. And at the end of the day, it's going to be value. So the word competitive now, competitiveness now is, to me, is the focal point. Individual competitiveness and corporate competitiveness. And the training program that you put together. <laughs> it's been interesting. It makes it happen. Yeah, as, as we visit, say, those four employers here, and as I've visited folks this summer from Europe to Asia to New Zealand to elsewhere, it's been interesting to see the level of maturity of those organizations yes. in their plans to educate folks. Right? And they all admitted, every one of them said, we're going to lose people. Yeah. That's interesting. And, they, yeah, they, I like the realism. You know, they're like, look, we know that we're on, one of them said the farm team. We know that we're going to keep the, folks for a certain amount of time, and then they're going to move on to another yeah. company. But we're going to do what we can to keep them longer, right? They finally bit that bullet, and they just finally said, we know it's going to happen. And in fact, one of them said, we'll probably have 100% turnover every 12 months. But if we don't do this, we can't be competitiveness. We can't be competitive, right. and we'll just be out of business. So they, bit, they, they, they finally, they just drank that Kool-Aid and just said, okay, this is what it is, and it's built into the plan. It's part of the strategic and, and business they, And they felt that doing good education for those folks might widen the aperture or, or the pathway so that instead of losing people every 12 months, they might only lose them every two years. Or, you know what I mean, they can, they can stretch it out. I've seen that discussion. But also, it was interesting what one of them said, I'm okay with that. Because yeah. he said, when the word gets out, and, and I, you know, I, I said, oh, so you're going to be a farm team. But think of it this way. For those of you, let's say, who are pro football, U.S. pro football aficionados, right? What, what universities do you want to get the running back from? Or do you want to get the linebacker from? Or the quarterback right. from? And you know, you, I mean, they know they're going to leave, but they always go get more. But where they go, people know where they're coming from. Yeah. So they felt, he, uh, this one, uh, one employer felt very comfortable in saying, I want people to know that it was me that made that person what they are. I had something to do with it, and it brings credibility to my company as a credible business. And, and he saw that basically as a marketing tool. 
It was interesting to see a couple of the employees being very interested in making sure that all of their employees had, how should I put this, the right foundation of skills. They were interested, for example, in ITF Plus. And I, I'm not going to talk about that cert, but I do want to talk about the idea of silos. Which is IT Fundamentals. I'm sorry, yeah, IT Fundamentals. I call it ITF Plus. Sorry about that. But the reason I thought it was interesting is because one thing that I found, one of the insights, um, I've done a lot of work in cybersecurity over the years. And hackers love, hackers absolutely love silos, if you guys know what I'm trying to say. They love it when employees only know a certain thing, or this employee knows something, or whatever. Because anytime there are silos, hackers find a way of kind of getting in between those silos, and that's where the opportunity is, right? They and it was wedge in between. And it was interesting to see how IT Fundamentals was seen as a way and, and I don't, you don't have to make it IT fundamentals. You can make it Security Plus, or I don't care what education program. But making it so that every part of the organization knows where technology ends, where it begins, how information flows through the company. Yeah. That to me was interesting. So what's really been enlightening, first in this trip, with the employers finally coming to, uh, and I use the word finally, because <laughs> uh, my wife has asked me a few times, why do you keep doing this? You know, you come home from these trips and you're just so grumpy. Uh, <laughs> you know, even my little grandson goes, Grandpa Grumpy. You know. um, but um, it's happening, it's changing. Uh, and like I said, Brazil was 18 months ago, I'm seeing it, and now I'm seeing what I saw in Brazil. And I can't even tell you how thrilled I am with the conversations that Dr. Martin and I've been having, and he's having some conversations with employers, and I'll let you expand on that. So that's very, very exciting. And all I'm going to tell you as individuals, if you don't have value, no one needs you. What are you bringing to the table? Now, I always told that to my you know, my sons. You know, talk about you know when they needed to go out and you know looking for the woman, right? And I said, if you don't bring anything to the table, uh, believe it or not, I saw every episode of Sex in the City and I saw every movie with my wife and my daughter. And what I learned out of that was, if you don't bring anything to the table, they have no need for you. Same thing with an employer. If you don't bring anything to the table, they have no, no need for you. 10 years of experience doesn't mean anything. Because it could be one year of experience 10 times. And we were talking about how tra not traveling for two years, I told James, I said, man, I'm just so out of whack. And, and he was laughing. That's that one year of experience 10 <laughs> times. Well, I was laughing because it was the same thing. As, uh, as I started traveling again about a year, you know, in a big way uh, last year, I noticed how out of whack I was. I was bringing things. I'd pull things out of the suitcase like, why would I even bring that? You know, just, and yet, because I've been traveling for many, many years, and yet just getting out of the game that little while, year and a half or two years it was, it was interesting to see how out of whack I was or how the mistakes I made. And I, I, I want to draw an analogy on that with what it means for IT professionals. Because IT professionals can be very talented. They can be very good at what they're doing. But it's interesting, we've, we've, uh, I work for the research division of CompTIA. And we've done some research basically asking IT professionals, do you know where the next step is? in your career. You know, you're a pen tester right now, or you're in the cloud right now, or somewhere. Where's the next step to go? And they have a very clear idea about, hey, I want more money. That's great. Uh, they have a great idea of how they want to add more value to the organization, which I think is a better way of thinking about it. But very few of them knew technologically exactly what would add more value to their organization. And to me, that tells me there's kind of a poverty of discussion between the tech folks and the business folks running the business. And there needs to be more of a strategic approach to IT. And uh, that's, certain companies get it, certain companies don't. Everybody is in certain levels of that maturity quotient. And you know, one of the things, and, and, and it was something that kept irking me, is the fact that uh, the industry always looked at the academic and training institution to develop the type of skills that they want that they want yeah but then but they didn't want to participate in, in 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 the development of those skills isn't that funny and yeah. that's one thing that's really neat about CompTIA is that 
as professionals don't know the next step to take authoritatively, in this, it's kind of like, I mean, they should know in the same way that as travelers, because we travel a lot, we should know the next steps to take. Yet we get out of, you know, we, we get out of practice very quickly. And it's two separate skills. You have IT skills. Getting to that next level requires a different set of skills. And I think that's one thing that, that, that certification brings to the table is because instead of a body of knowledge being developed by a few people or a few hundred people, you have in CompTIA a body of knowledge created by literally thousands of working professionals. So you know what's important, you know what's not important, you know? Um, on, on, the, on, the, on the other hand, no, because uh, no, as you said, Leonard, things have changed, right? And what we're seeing is that and I don't know if this is part of what drove the change, and, and maybe you could, could, could speak on that. But it seems like everyone, every company, is suffering brain drain. Yes. All right? And I don't know if that is the thing that is driving everyone to have a different mindset in terms of trying to participate now in terms of those skills development. I guess my question is, where's the drain? Where's the where are the brains draining to? That's my question. Um, um, I you know I'd like to find out who's hiring those people. No kidding. Uh, there's but a lot of but at the end of the day, um, not being. I, I I mean, think about this. We have how many thousands of secondary university, uh, secondary not secondary, post secondary institutions in the United States. And we have a million IT, unfilled IT jobs. Here in Jamaica, you have how many tertiary institutions? And, and I know some of them are just teachers' colleges. And, but still, in your, you have 2.9 million people, and you have unfilled IT jobs. Um, Brazil, the numbers are, are right up there with the US. Over, every year, there's an, another net new 120,000 unfilled jobs in Brazil. And they have uh, hundreds of universities in Brazil. Mexico, they have a network of polytechnic institutions. They have all these, um, uh, their version of community colleges. And then they have Tech de Monterrey. They have 26 campuses of Tech de Monterrey, which costs as much as Harvard. And they don't have his skilled workers either. They're not feeding them in there. I think part of it is apprenticeships, mentoring. We need to look at different ways of getting and mainlining, streamlining workers into the workforce. And we need to be looking at the alternative workforce. Well, the strategy that the um, employers here are looking at, and, and I, th I think I shared with you, you know where they're going? They're going to the high schools. They're not waiting for the 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 people to go to the universities. They're 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 as they say in the cowboy movies. They're heading them off at the pass. They're recruiting in the high schools. Direct right into their program. Right into right. their program. I do see that. Yeah. So, Mentoring internships. Yes, like that, internships. Right? Um, and, and developing their own programs or partnering with Vector to do those things. Because uh, they don't have time. You know, if you, they don't have time anymore. And Dr. Mar touched on it in, in, in at the beginning. Four years, spend a lot of money, and you come out and you're literally unemployable in IT. I'm not talking about other industries, I'm just saying IT. And, and we know that's a fact. I, 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 I talk to many companies and they say, well, we can't, we hire them because we're supposed to hire university degrees, but they can't do the work. So instead of hiring one, we have to hire three. So as together, they might get the job done. That's a, that, that's a plan, it's a plan. But those plans need to become more sophisticated, don't yeah. they, on, on that side of the house. I'm curious, uh, the employers that are here, what are some of the skills, and I don't know if there's a microphone to hand around or what have you, but what are some of the skills 
that you tend to look for. I tend to use the word skillability, meaning that as you look for the right cocktail or the right mixture of skills, I'm curious what that is, uh, uh, what some of those things you're looking for. And it could be technical skills, it could be along the lines of, well, people will actually show up on time or what have you. Uh, uh, I remember years ago working with a fantastic guy. He was, I love this guy, but he had no ability to show up on time. He was a real good subject matter expert out of uh, Atlanta. And I remember his boss came to me and said, you know, James, if a person can't show up on time, I'm not sure I want him around. And uh, that, I'm, I'm just using that as an example. But you know, there's technical skills, there's other skills. Employers here, what are some of the things that you tend to look for? I'm curious uh, if anybody is willing to uh, to <laughs> shout it out. Oh, we got a hand here. Oh, over here. Oh. No. Oh, sorry. It's kind of like an auction around here, you know. <laughs> if you scratch your nose, it's like, oh, so. <laughs> person here. So. Nobody wants to fess up. Oh, uh, we got one here. Yeah, sure. Um, I oh, let's wait for wait, the microphone. Wait for the sorry. Because we got online folks here, too. I don't hear it. There you go. There we nope. go. Thank you. Yes. Um, someone mentioned it earlier. You want people who will bring value to the organization. Bring no value. two ways about it. Um, some people who don't just come and fill a, um, fill a post. Um, no ideas. They are they criticized, but no su no no suggestions of solutions. Um, you want people that can come and really make a meaningful contribution to your firm. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, from a technical perspective, one of the things that I heard uh, was from a gentleman, Stephen uh, uh, Tigat, who lives in Antwerp. He runs a managed service provider company, and he says it's all about the applications. And I said, well, what do you mean all about the applications? What he did is he, as a managed service provider, moved earlier than most managed service providers from selling physical servers and doing installed services to the cloud. He did that about 2015 or 2016, which for a lot of folks, it's a long time ago. We're only seeing serious cloud adoption over the last five years or so. Uh, COVID helped that, I suppose. But the thing that I thought was interesting that he said was we need people who really understand the underlying protocols of how applications talk. HTTP. Do they understand the TCP handshake? And forgive me, I'm a technology evangelist, so I tend to geek out a lot. I like the technology. But it was interesting from a security perspective. I know a lot of people who were like, okay, tell me, James, what are the really cool applications? that we could learn. And there's all these applications with goofy names like Burp Suite and the Beef Browser, which these are things that help you kind of do man in the middle attacks and things like that. And, but you don't, you can't use those tools because all they do is they kind of insert yourself in a conversation. And if you insert yourself in a conversation that's a different language that you don't understand, you can hear it loud and clear, but you're just like going, well, I'm lost. And I've seen that time and time again with people who want to go into the cloud, for example. They, they want to learn vendor stuff, that's fine, but then that changes every so often. In fact, I was talking to a guy, his name is Robert Vanier. He works for a company called AstraZeneca, which I think we've all heard of, right? Yeah. Uh, he uh, works for the data center and he leads the data center and the cloud. And he, was, he has some really interesting insights about how they pivoted to help create that vaccine. Well, his point was every time they go up to create a business solution in the cloud, it changes radically every three weeks. And I'm like, three weeks? Because you know how people use Moore's law, you know, that the CPU's uh, size or whatever changes, speed changes about every, uh, doubles about every 18 months. And people but, always yeah. misuse that to say technology changes every 18 months. Well, now we're down to every three weeks. And I said, well, how do you keep ahead of that? And his answer was foundational knowledge. So how applications talk is one thing, foundational knowledge is another. And I think uh, they're both very similar because you need to know those foundational technologies. That way when things change, let's say every three weeks or whatever, workers can keep their feet. They can, they can stay focused on things. That's an insight that I've gained over the last six months. One, sorry, one of the things that um, that we are faced with, and I guess it's uh, it must be a, a worldwide type phenomenon. Uh, you know, sometimes we we are, especially folks who are uh, want to come into IT, mm. and 
they hear buzzwords and certain things sounds um, very glamorous. They, they, find, they, they, they hear that how easy it is to make money. Yeah. And, and so you'd probably have, you probably have someone who wants to go into security, doesn't have a clue about the first bit. <laughs> but, and, and, but you know, they are the ones who, who, who call and wants to go into security. Now, if, you, if, if you're advising any, any, anybody who is listening now and who is sitting there and says, I want to, to, to be in security, um, what would you say to them in terms of even starting the entire process? Great question. It's a great question. I think one of the first things when it comes to getting into security is be prepared to work hard to learn about things that may not seem to be relevant to security at all. You know, do you know how an endpoint works? IP addresses, MAC addresses, how applications talk, things like that. That takes a bit of, you could you call it drudgery, you could take time or whatever. Uh, that's the first thing. Second thing, hands on. Every time you learn a concept or hear about a cool, like a SOC, you know, Security Operations Center, find something practical. I'm, I'm really big on, if you hear about whatever concept, try to find a way in which it's actually used in the world. So download an application, get a virtual machine going or something. So practical is very important for me too. Yeah. Yeah, you have a question? You should move. <laughs> <laughs> You're in trouble now. All right. All right. Any, anybody with a question? I mean, you, the, the, the folks here I know, especially in, in, in the IT area, you're always complaining, right? <laughs> All right. I, I think, oh, I'm sorry. So I'll touch on the question that was asked earlier in terms of um, what it is that we look for when we are seeking okay. skill sets um, and what I find to be some of the challenges. Um, Awareness, first and foremost. Um, I find okay. that persons are turning up to interviews not aware of the industry that they want to work in. They're just looking for a job. So they, seriously, seriously, they just kind of show up and they're like, I'm just looking for a job, uh, you know, what, what do I have to do? They don't a job that know. pays well, and yeah. IT jobs ah, pay well. So they want the pay, but they don't have they the knowledge. They want to pay. Okay. Holding um, out for a management position. Yes. <laughs> the, the, the attitude is wrong because there is a sense of entitlement. Okay, I've finished a degree and no, I deserve a job that pays. Wow. Um, and the, the, the approach to advancing themselves in terms of doing the research, going to do the certification courses, and developing that skill set that you say you want to put to work. And those are the issues that I find with what is now available in the job market, and hence why it is that we are having a difficulty filling some of those vacancies that need you know, skilled IT professionals. Those I, are the challenges. You know, I, I think, first of all, I was one of those people. You know, way back before electricity, when when uh, I graduated from college and I went straight to grad school, and I, you know, the grad school I went to, um, well, well, it was a two-year international MBA school, and when I when I received my degree, it was sort of like I was waiting for the offers. And I, I don't need to send any letters out. I'm waiting for the interviews, and, we, and you know, I I I, I was hit broadside with the reality stick that no one cares they really don't and my daughter she received her undergraduate degree from the University of Chicago for those of you who don't know what it is they have the most Nobel Prize winners in, in sciences of any of any school in the world and that's where Enrico Fermi uh, had the first out, yeah. uh, controlled fission and that's where actually uh, you know so a few other things were so uh, invented there and the first Heisman Trophy um, but she graduated from there again 
come on, where are my offers? And she went and, and um, she, she actually did a program called Teach for America. So she went down to New Orleans and she was a teacher for a year in, in a high school. And when she was interviewing um, with the administration, and she said, I have a degree from University of Chicago. Where is that? <laughs> and, and, and so she was hit with a reality stick. Where I'm going with all of this is, first of all, those of you listening and other people is, the university, you know, I think everyone comes out thinking you've accomplished a lot, and you have. You've worked hard to get that degree, whoever you are, to get that four-year degree and then you know, you, any postgraduate. But at the end of the day, if you don't have validated skills, something has to validate your skills. For my daughter, she had to go on and, and receive, and, and, and not only get her doctorate, but then she had, she did um, a residency, and she had to do, she did three internships in one in Baltimore, one in in Dallas, one in D, in Washington D.C., and, and then finally she, there was some validation that that she could do the job, and and it's all about the validating of the skill. And IT is no different. And why it is, it, I, I, it almost seems to me unique to be unique in IT, that for some reason people just think there's a shortcut. And I don't know where they, they get that from. Um, and, and, and I always equate IT to mathematics. You have to add, subtract, multiple, multiply, divide, then you do algebra one, then you do algebra two, then you do analytic geometry, then you do trigonometry, uh, then you do pre-cal, then you do calculus, and then you go on from there. It took me four years to do all of that. I don't know how long it took anyone else here. Did anyone else do it less than that? I mean, uh, I mean, come on, folks. And IT is no different. And, and the worst thing about, you know, math never changes, right? I mean, two plus two is still four. It was, it was four when uh, Aristotle was alive and it's still four, but technology changes. It changes quite a bit. That's a moving target. <laughs> Very quickly. And, and so that even makes life more difficult because when you start, you start uh, your four-year degree, by the time you're done, CompTIA's already you know, done two renditions of a, of, a, of a certification yeah. in the four years you've been in college. So um, in, in the IT world, it's tough. The rewards are phenomenal. Because, I mean, there's so many doors open up for you, but there just, there are no shortcuts. And that's so, so difficult to share with people. When that new, when that person came in and asked to be hired or what have you, right? Was it fairly obvious that, uh, did they have any background in IT at all? Or just a little bit or, or what? Oh, sorry, microphone time here. All right, so over time, I have seen, it's been a mixed bag. So there have been persons who are coming straight out of high, um, um, university, and this will be their first job, they've finished their first degree in IT, and they are looking to work. However, they can't hit the ground running. And I, as an employer of IT um, um, professionals, I don't have a challenge with someone who does not yet have the skill set at the level is required. And hence why I speak to the issue of attitude, because when it is, it is. that the person yeah. turns up in an interview and there's evidence that they have not even done the research to see what is required for the field that you're seeking to go into, that for me is a red flag. You are not ready and I'm not prepared to take the gamble. You know, it's interesting, during an interview one time, I could tell with the way the interview was, uh, it was for a, an auditing company, uh, for, uh, pen testing. And I could tell at first they were like, I'm not, they were like, I'm not sure that this James guy has what it takes. But I asked so many questions during the interview, like, well, how can you show me? You know, I took the interview as far as I could, and I said, well, that may not be enough. But, and then I started asking them tons of questions. And that changed their mind. They're like, well, he has so many questions. He really does want to learn this yeah. stuff. So they, they did hire me. Uh, that, that, that was really cool to see. Uh, so part of that is on the the part of the person asking for the job. But part of it's also the willingness of the employer to say, look, we need to bring you along. Are you willing to start at this level 
and then we'll bring you along. Can you do that or are you like, no, we're not going to start somebody because they need to be here before, you know, they have to be at a certain level, otherwise it's a waste of our time. All right, so that is where the conversation um, really has actually grown with, um, within the organization where um, we've had to sensitize, I think, HR in regards to how it is that we now have That's to change to the approach to recruiting ICT skill sets. Okay. And so in an interview, I have found on many occasions that HR and the other members of the panel. So when persons sit back, you know, that, that, that's it. You have given up. And I've found on occasions where I've had to take the time pretty much providing guidance to the candidate that is before me so that they don't walk into it. So I have, may have decided that I'm not going to take the chance, but just to provide some guidance so they don't walk into another interview and make the same mistake. Right. Right. So I think um, there is the need for some amount of mentorship I think in the degree programs in the, um, the, the institutions um, that's preparing them for the work world you're touching on something which is now where I think we let's let's turn let's turn the I don't know turn the mirror turn the table yeah. turn the lazy Susan in the Chinese restaurant I don't know but there is a solution people there is a solution and, and first of all, I'm going to tell you, yes, this is an infomercial. CompTIA is the only program that does this. For IT, CompTIA is the only program that does this. And someone's sitting out there going, oh, no, there's this and there's <laughs> this and there's... There isn't, folks. I'll, I'll sit here right now. We'll play the Jeopardy theme. Tell me what other program can take somebody with no IT skills and turn them into a cybersecurity professional. I could see, sing the theme here for a minute if you want me to. There isn't another program. It doesn't exist, folks. And, and, and just as we said, there's no shortcut or anything like that. But there is a path. It can help you. And then when you have um, an institution like, like a vector, and, and um, you mentioned mentoring. Training is training, and I don't, I don't like the word training because it sounds like you're a dog. Uh, t t t teaching, um, uh, teaching and imparting. Um, Interning, in, in uh, whatever, peer learning, whatever you want to call building, it. Building skills, building knowledge, is, is, is different now. And, and part of that is not only with the, the you, you have the CompTIA program, but now the new tools that CompTIA is giving, giving to our, our learning partners that allow the Teaching is different now. It's not just the, the, the instructor um, or lecturer standing at the head of the class and talking for 48 hours in a semester <laughs> at you. That's not what it is anymore. With the new learning materials that CompTIA um, has for our learning partners, learning has changed. It's, it's, um, it's mentoring now. It's not teaching, it's mentoring. It's mentoring and guiding. And, 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 and uh, the resources are more real world. They are real world. And, and, and they're just more enjoyable. They're, they're, you know, they're digestible. And it isn't, it isn't a headache to have to open up your computer and start learning. It's actually quite fun, I'm going to tell you that. Um, so it's changed. And I say that to the employers out there, you want a plan? A plan is talk to somebody like Dr. Marr, because he has new tools. He has a, a, a phenomenally skilled staff that knows how to teach. And with the new tools that uh, CompTIA has, has for them, and with the, the learning path of the CompTIA certification program, I'm telling you, there is nothing else. It doesn't exist. And, and um, and, 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 and if you're an individual, I'm telling you, this is the way to go. If you think you're going to go find something for free on Udemy or something for $10, knock yourself out and go, tell me how it all works out in about five years. Those Call are, me up, let me so know. So many programs have a million people start a program and three people finish, yeah. or, or none. Do you know what Harvard, Harvard said, um, uh, came out a few years ago? The Harvard MBA program says that over 85% of the people that register and uh, start their program don't finish. 85. And, and you know, one of the things um, that I find a little disturbing is that when someone, let's say, asks about a course, 
what is the, f uh, where, where is she? No, I was looking for Tonya. Because <laughs> I was going to ask her, what is the, 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 the most popular question uh, or response? And it's all about, what does it cost? Right? What does it cost? And in other words, as soon as they find that, oh, wait a second. Uh, the people downstairs, um, their, their, their course is $5 less than yours. Right? So in terms of even, you know, I, I always say, you need, guys need to, to know how to assess value. Right? You, 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 you want a course that is cheap, and you want to be able to, 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 to reach a certain level, but you, you, do, you never ever look at it as an investment. You always want to, to, to you all, it's always an expense, right? And it's always looking right. at the cost. And it's always amazing that someone would easily not register because of a $10 difference, you know? I, I have a real world story. I'll tell you, I had three, three young men from a tertiary institution, in another part of this, this, this island, and they went through the IT program and basically they came out of the program and they couldn't, they, they couldn't find an IT job. Um, they, one of the instructors said, call Leonard, see if, how he can help you. So they told me what they were going through and I knew what they experienced and I said, I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. You buy this one resource that we have, um, you buy the resource and the cost to them would have been uh, it was the resource with labs and cloud-based real-world labs. Uh, I don't know. Uh, for uh, this was for A plus, so there are two tests. So the cost was like two hundred and fifty-four dollars for labs and this resource. So for an investment of that, I said I will give you free test vouchers for the two tests, and we know they're not cheap. They're not cheap, and 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 um, not one of them took me up on the offer. Not one of them. And after they paid a lot of money to go to college, because the college they went to was not a cheap one, and and after paying everything they paid, they wouldn't pay. They wouldn't come up with two hundred fifty-four dollars to take the A plus certification test for free. All right, so we, we spoke earlier we're, and we were discussing this whole thing about career changes. And one of the biggest problems that a career changer has is after being in the, in the, in the working world in a different um, field, um, develop certain amount of responsibilities and so on. And now they want to start their IT journey. What would you say to someone like that in terms of how do you go about that? Because I, I think a large number of our students have that concern. So I don't, any, any, any advice? First thing is that your previous experience or your life experience always has value. Uh, I didn't switch into uh, working in an IT career until I was about, let me think for a second, about 30. I got my uh, degree in British, well, my PhD in British Romantic Literature. Yeah. All right, I, 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 and I, I, Leonard's probably hear, tired of hearing me say this, but I, I call that my PhD in unemployment. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, we had, my wife and I had two, and I think a quarter and it was time for me to get back into technology where I belong. And so the first step that I took was foundational learning. I already talked about that. So the, th the thing that really was a lesson that I had to realize was that there are ways in which I can go back in and you could use the word leverage or pilfer or salvage. A friend of mine calls me a retread. James, you're a retread, right? But be willing to have the humility to go back in and identify certain skills that are important. For example, research. I'm a very good researcher. And that helped me 
figure out the best avenues and figure out the best technologies and understand security really, really well because I'm a good researcher. But the other thing uh, I could write, and so that's one reason why I, I got hired by another uh, security analytics firm. A bunch of guys, they're very good at what they do, but they hate writing. So they, they hired the writer. There's that. But I think the other thing uh, that's really important is I think when you are later in life and it's time to change, you think it's just too late. And it's a real myth, con uh, I call it a myth conception. It's a myth. It's a real misconception. I think one of the things that you need to realize, it's just not too late. Uh, uh, if I can change at 30, you know, and that's the average age. Uh, usually, average age of people uh, that I've seen industry-wide. Uh, before this, I was in a web, uh, a web development uh, certification before I got into CompTIA. Average age was about 36. All right, so let, let's, let's, let's change the conversation just a bit. Um, let's talk a little about trends. trends. Right. Trends? Yeah, trends. And, you know, as an as, as a, uh, employer or someone in the industry, uh, seeking advice now in terms of, in terms of what, are, what are those trends that we should be looking at? in terms of um, business, um, do, you know, being more competitive or, or uh, you know, new business or new no. areas. Um, yeah, so just give me your thoughts on that. One thing I'll start with, and I'll throw it over to you, Leonard, is take a look, just Google for it. T type in CompTIA 2022 IT Outlook. It dropped this summer. There's also the 2022 cybersecurity trends. Those are two research reports. They're available for free, quite detailed. Uh, thousands of different uh, CIOs, CISOs chiming in, talking about that. So that's, I think, a, you could Google that and find some pretty good information there. So we could talk about additional trends as well, Leonard. Um, I'm probably not as well versed in industry trends as you are. But oh, I think uh, actually this morning I sent James the Slack uh, Slack chat and I said have, have you noticed that you don't see any profile on LinkedIn with the with Six Sigma on it remember there was a you know for about 15 years you couldn't swing a dead cat without uh, uh, without hitting a resume that said Six Sigma Lean Six Sigma and all yeah I, yeah and I, I, I can't even find one anymore I have over 21,000 connections on LinkedIn I, I bet I couldn't find a person that would has Six Sigma on, the, I, I on their resume one. I, I know one person who, who you know, yeah. just loves it or whatever but you're right it's in a minority but yeah but it's um, I, I think at, at, at the end of the day where the way I respond to trends because since I, I don't know what the trends are that are coming is is that because I've seen many people literally hit career cul-de-sacs because they refuse to change hmm. they refuse to keep learning and we were joking before this event started I'm Leonard 4.0 I'm not Leonard 1.0 I'm Leonard 4.0 mm -hmm. and if you're if you don't have that introspection that you know that you need to make some changes and 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 I don't know everyone's story here or everyone's story in the audience. everyone's story is such that you know you know I don't know everyone's story but I'm also going to tell you uh, the, the person that's sitting here firstly first from a, a, a personal married life the guy that's here is not the guy that existed 42 years ago got married 42 years ago I would I would never watch Sex in the City 42 years ago, <laughs> um, and I you know and, and even and, and so personally I've changed, but you, you you just have to be hungry to constantly be you, you have to be constantly evolving, and in this case you never really come out a butterfly. You're always the caterpillar that's in the cocoon, and you always change it to a different butterfly in the cocoon. You know. Um, it, 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 if you don't, if you don't, a, if you don't have that as an individual, and you don't have that as a company, because I've seen many small companies literally just die on the vine because they couldn't make transitions. I worked for a company, Time Division Multiplexer Company. 
we owned the industry. We were on the uh, New York Stock Exchange and it was us. You know, if you didn't have our time division multiplexer for voice data integration, and if you didn't have our centrally managed um, CSUs, DSUs, and our modem network, you weren't anybody. And, and then along came the router. And I still remember our CEO saying, what do you need a router for? <laughs> I heard him say that and I immediately called the headhunter and said, I'm looking for a job. Because yeah. I knew then what was going to happen. And a year later, that company sold to another company, was dismantled, disappeared. I moved on and I was a happy camper. I think one of the big trends, first of all, is data, uh, data analytics. Um, and I'm going to use it, data analytics. I, it kills me when I see uh, big universities say, hey, become a data scientist in six weeks. Uh, I'm just like, I don't know what kind of drugs they're taking. That's ridiculous. Uh, that's unprofessional. And it's dishonest, frankly. Uh, but data analytics, uh, and yes, we need data scientists, but for every one data scientist, which are important, you need a hundred or a thousand data analysts, and that's one thing I really, is a huge trend. Another trend is um, uh, the use of data from IoT, operational technology, etc. Another trend in security, uh, do you want, we can go deeper into each one of these if you want, but another trend, uh, zero trust, the adoption of uh, not using VPNs anymore. It was interesting, it was, uh, some people earlier I was talking to, they're saying, well with a VPN it solves that problem. And they didn't realize that they had just done a demo of how an endpoint had been completely compromised through a buffer overflow, right? Well, if an endpoint has been compromised by a buffer overflow and is belonging to a VPN, that means there's a tunnel, a beautiful encrypted tunnel that delivers that malware from that endpoint right into the rest of the network. My point is, zero trust is the idea that, you know, risk is identified on both sides of any firewall, so firewalls are less important. There are table stakes, but they're not the end-all be-all. VPNs are an issue, it's all about constant monitoring, and that's another major trend because it has tied to zero trust. What monitoring and analytics mean? Great, you're a pen tester. The big skill is less the red team pen tester. It's more that security analyst, the person who listens for the noise, who listens for the indicators of compromise, and then improves their security controls. A lot of that does go back to data and the ability, of, whether it be security data or IT data or IoT data, being able to crunch a data set and kind of like with Legos, you guys, you have grandkids or kids that play with Legos? Do you guys remember playing with Legos? Right? They're lying on the ground, right? Well, that's individual data. What is of value? Well, when you can turn the, those Legos into the USS Enterprise or into an airplane or a car or a house. In the same way, we need people, whether it be in the security industry or the security branch or pillar of IT, or in IT itself, uh, you know, the providing infrastructure. We need people who can really crunch data. Um, so I'm really big on that and big on the idea of zero trust. And also another divide that we see from the security perspective, the information technology, operational technology divide. But I think we all know, you know, IT is servers endpoints, your mobile phone or whatever. IOT and OT, you know, those are those things that control the power grid or keep diesel generators going or wind generating turbines. Those speak different languages and oftentimes there are two very different teams that work on them. More and more they're converging but in very strange and wrong ways and that's a major trend that we need to overcome. And it's really interesting when you talk about that because okay. this is a classic example of, of how CompTIA is approaching the data analyst trend. Because it, it's been our ongoing message from the beginning of time back in 1995. So there really isn't anything out there to make, to help people become data analysts. And everyone's scrambling. You know, you, people are Googling, they're hearing about it. They see it in articles and you're starting to see it. It's popping up on, on LinkedIn resumes. It is. It it is. is. Yeah. Business Analyst was the hot one in 2017. And, um, and, and, and what CompTIA did, you know, did research. And, and, and so what CompTIA, and, and what certifications there were in data for a data analyst were from the vendors. 
Power BI. Um, Tableau. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there, there are about four or five out there. Sure. And, and each one has a certification for how to use their, their product. Stuff. Yeah. Just how to use their stuff. And CompTIA came up with Data Plus, which is out, yeah. and it like everything, like A Plus <coughs> or There's Network Plus too. or Security Plus. There's a new one too, yeah. <coughs> it, it, we launched it in April. April? April. We launched it. Yeah. And, and um, but um, it, it covers the whole spectrum. And then next year we're launching two more. So we will now have, along with our infrastructure path and our cybersecurity path and our data center path, now we have a data analyst path. And so Conti has addressed it. It's out there. And um, it's the vendor neutral solution that's addressing the, 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 the area of data analysis, not the product, but we do talk about the products because you have to learn, you have to know how to use the products. So it, that's a classic yeah. example of CompTIA is entering this, uh, this uh, tech, making a little bit of a turn from the technical stuff, but everyone has to be a data analyst now. If, if you're working in a, if you're working, if you're doing, um, uh, whether you're a blue team or red team, um, you, you, you have to be able to analyze the data you capture. Yeah. Um, if you're in networking, you have to analyze that data you capture. Wh how do you do it? Well, you need to, yes, the tools exist, but how do you use the tools? And, and so that's a classic example. And as we've seen, uh, we came by this honestly, our interest in, in data, not only because the industry told us, but also uh, we have Cloud Plus, Cloud Essentials, so the cloud democratizes our ability to grab data and turn it into information. In other words, you know, 20 years ago, who could grab data from all sorts of disparate resources, crunch it, and turn it into actionable information? Well, that was the Googles of the world. There's no way small businesses could do that. Well, now they can. Yeah. Right. So as things have become more abstracted and democratized, abstraction meaning, you know, used to be you had to get all sorts of computers together to do that. And remember in 2013 we were all talking about Hadoop, right? Well now we're talking about, sure, big data, but we're really talking about using data in granular ways and it's really accessible. We can go up as a business and we can source a data lake from the cloud. And that enables us to grab data from many different resources and crunch that. And small businesses can do that. And I mean small as in 10 people or less so yeah. okay I've left you speechless sorry about yeah, that yes totally speechless. <laughs> all right um, professional now um, in preparing mm. themselves and especially you know where it still exists where our IT profession is is, is sometimes seen seen as not one of the the strategic partners in a in a company, you know, um, any kind of advice to finding themselves into that situation where they they want to move away from being the IT manager and being a strategic partner in 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 a, in a company. Is uh, as you demonstrate your skill set, that will come. Also, you have to work on the personal relationships. I was talking of mine who works for a major retailer in the Midwest, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. And he was saying that basically it comes down to the interpersonal relationships and developing that. And he has moved, he, you know, he's stayed where he is now for the last five years because he has that good interpersonal relationship. He moved because he didn't see that possibility in previous companies. Yeah, and, 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 I, and I kind of see exactly where you're going with that. Mm -hmm. Because I know technicians or technical persons think that they only need to speak to the computer, right? right? And not necessarily to, to the other managers, as you said, um, building those relationships and so on. Because I know I, I, as, a, as, a, as a budding engineer at one point, I thought some of those courses was a waste of time, you know? <laughs> um, and, but that's the way you get through um, and, and building those relationships. I knew a guy who I was seen as the, as the CEO whisperer at one point, and I asked him, I said, what, what, why are, do you have that reputation? And he said, I just see myself as a good translator. And I said, what do you mean translator? He said, well, I translate business and risk talk 
into tech speak and I turn tech speak into normal speak and it's that liaison translation and and so many people uh, you could argue in IT can be very linear and and they're like well look if it's true I don't need to argue I, or I don't need to present it I don't need to massage it or whatever they see that as unnecessary and actually you need a personality that is willing to galvanize that's willing to negotiate and I think that's one of the major skills yeah. in terms of certifications now Leonard in terms of you mentioned a couple of the, the new 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 certifications that you're seeing down the road um, the, anything that we should, I mean, aside from data analytics, which, by the way, I'm, 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 I myself have told persons that's the hill I'm going to die on. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a good hill. That's a good hill. So, um, but any, 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 any other insights that um, you know, someone looking at Comptia, looking at where Comptia is going, um, that you want to share? Well. I think what's really, really important is um, people don't really know what CompTIA is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, many times, pe you know, well, people just think it's a company. You know, it's a company like name any IT manufacturer out there. And um, what, what, what's important to understand is CompTIA is an association. It's the only global technology association. Sometimes we call ourselves a trade association. And our members are companies that are in the industry. And, 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 um, and for Latin countries, and you may not, you know, you may think this is a little weird, but in Latin countries, when you hear the word a trade association or industry association, those are funded by the government. So I, whenever I'm in Latin America, I always say, it's a global um, nonprofit um, association with no government funding because immediately people think, oh, well, you know, government funds you, you just, you don't do anything. And they are. Uh, basically, most of the associations don't work. So it's important to understand CompTIA is an association like you've never seen before. I'm just telling you. It's, it's the most dynamic association and Amazing. our members are active. Councils drive the association. It's all about councils. We have advisory councils, we have industry segment councils, and, and the members drive this association. And, and from, that, um, from that drive is how we learn about um, trends. Sure. And then, and then, and we invest heavily. We have a research department that ke that is helping us uncover trends like data. Like and, data, and, that's yeah. they, uh, they absolutely yeah. uncovered that. And um, I, there, nobody does what Comdia does. And and uh, I'm, I I challenge you to find any other um, organization, institution, or entity that does what we do. And 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 everything we do has a global focus. And so with that, then of course we're the, we're, we, we have the skills development program. And again, nobody does what CompTIA does. Um, yes, there are a lot, there's a lot of peripheral stuff where people work very hard to make money off the CompTIA brand. See that every day. Um, had a partner in Panama send me a hyperlink to some Facebook posting. You know, someone's always trying to make money off the CompTIA brand and people will you know they'll fall for it and uh, they'll call me up later and say okay now show me how to do it right but at the end of the day um, it, it works we know the CompTIA skills development program works for example um, uh, in, in uh, the first 20 uh, in, in the second 10 years of the 21st century we had a huge veteran uh, skill uh, workforce development program you know for all the troops coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan we've trained certified and had got helped get employed over a hundred thousand troops and that might even be a low number we know the program works and Comte itself has become, had become so frustrated with the educational model in the United States. We are now our own, we are a school. We're yeah. federally accredited as a school. We're an education company. Yeah, we're an and, education and, company. And we do that because the industry told us. Yeah. Know, look, we've got to 
move the needle. And we have to do that creatively with, uh, with Tom Riley's group. It does some really creative things. For example, who here's ever watched uh, Amazon or whatever with a friend? You know, friends in their home and you watch it at the same time, you can sync it. You know what I'm talking about? You could watch it from Jamaica, I can watch from Seattle. Well, we've innovated ways in which people could do labs together and things like that for peer-based education. Just for example, yeah. and in our research department, Amy Carrado, Seth Robbins, yeah. they do such a great job in identifying important trends. For example, so many people say, well, it's all about the cloud, which you could argue it is. I, but our research has kind of shown how we live in a cloud-first hybrid world, that there's, there still is a reason why you have installed uh, on-premise and data centers and the cloud. Um, it, it's, we've, uh, we found interesting, I think, research talking about the need for regulation and what regulation means to cybersecurity. And I'm talking about whether it be GDPR if you do business with Europe, right, or whatever regulations there are in various countries, right, and how that's driving us towards an understanding of privacy and what's, how security and privacy uh, combine. These are all major trends that have helped us not only identify identify and change our educational offerings, but also kind of lead the way in preparing people for the, right, you know, for the trends that are happening. Well, I had to laugh. I, I had a conversation a few months ago. I was talking with some people and they were talking about Linux being a trend. I said, dude, the cloud is Linux. What are you talking about it being a trend? But it's interesting. Some people like they, they say, well, I don't know Linux. I don't know anything about it. It's like, well, anybody here watch a movie with CGI in it? Well, that's Linux. Anybody ever used Google before? That's Linux. My, uh, if you, you know. Do you have a smart refrigerator? It's Linux. And and Linux. The hospitals. Your Android, every machine in the hospital is yeah. Linux. Your Android phone is a Linux box. And if you have an iPhone, that's free BSD Unix, which is Linux's sister or cousin or whatever. Yeah. So, Linux is another major uh, trend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was. I remember when uh, I'd love to geek out at, with Linux in the 90s. When back that was, they were literally the idea was, you know, you could be putting your job at jeopardy by messing around with that weird operating yeah. system. It's too disruptive. Well, look what it did. Now Microsoft loves yeah. Linux, you know, Windows subsystem for Linux and all that. So trend, huh? That's an yeah. interesting way to put it. Uh, <laughs> so, so, you know, understanding CompTIA will, I think, will help you understand that we're probably your best friend because we're a technology association. Okay. We're here for the technology companies. We're here for technology individuals. We're not here for a tax break. We're not doing it for social justice. We bring social justice because we help you get a job, make a better living, and have a better life. We've you know, been working on it's social not it's not a tax years. break or a gimmick. We've That's been not what it is. Justice for years. So um, understand that we know it's a program, we know it works, and we know it works so well that we're now a school, we have physical locations around the United States, and now we have literally a 24 by 7 online teaching program. We have a whole studio in the basement of CompTIA headquarters dedicated 24 by 7 online teaching. Every so, time I go to Chicago, sometimes they let me out of the basement because they, they film me all the time for Security Plus videos and stuff. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. We know it works. So my question is, what other certification body does what we do? I'll start singing the Jeopardy song again. <laughs> Nobody does what CompTIA does. All right, here's a, here's a question um, regarding, um, you know, looking at Jamaica and CompTIA, looking at some of the other Latin American countries and CompTIA, uh, where does Jamaica kind of stack up in, your, in, your, in, in, in terms of all of this? When, when I first started coming to Jamaica, um, Actually, I was quite surprised at the number of people who had taken certification tests. I don't, many are cert I don't know how many are certified. Um, but, so I'm talking 2009 to 2013, I was quite surprised. And then the number dropped off. Um, and then uh, around t 2014 to 2017, it picked up again because I had a, a few partners, including Vector, um, that were active and and creative in their activism and then it dropped it's dropped off again um so 
I, I, I don't know w whether to attribute that to economic situations. Um, um, I, I think at one point there was, CompTIA didn't really have competitors. Um, I would say there was another company that had, um, that came in and literally was giving away their product. And, and so, of course, something free, you know, every, you know, the herd goes over to something that's free. And, and um, so I think that might have put a dent into it. It might have been a combination of a number of things. Um, but I think Jamaica, it, it, it's, it's, so far it's been cyclical for me. Um, I'm hoping. Uh, the conversation, uh, a salesperson should never hope, I guess. Um, but I, I, I think this week was heartening in, in that the conversations were, were the conversations I, I, I've been wanting to hear for 12 years. I talked to CISOs and incident responders in New Zealand, for example, in the beginning of this summer. Just a few weeks ago, I talked to uh, an incident response team soccer leader uh, in Thailand. And then just yesterday, talked to somebody in Jamaica. So a different perspective rather than the cyclical side of it from the sales perspective. I'll do this from a topic or a, uh, uh, an indus industry job role perspective of the Security Operations Center. For example, in Thailand, they uh, got massively hacked in 2018. When I say they, I'm talking about banks. And so the government turned around and said, hey, we need operations centers and analysts to make sure those, to watch after those banks and help them out, okay? Uh, we saw the DDoS attack in Jamaica here, for example. That's why this, the JAWS CERT team was created. My point is, is like, well, where is Jamaica in terms uh, with, with Thailand? You know, is, is Thailand ahead of Jamaica or behind, or how does that work? To be honest, we're all in the same boat. And I talked to another person who incident, does incident response in the state of New Jersey. And I found it interesting. Now, he, just before COVID, uh, had the same problem. Like, I've got an incident response team, but they don't know exactly how to go about responding to incidents. I need to upskill them. And I found it interesting, though, that Thailand and uh, Jamaica and New Jersey and New Zealand, I found them all in the same boat in terms of we need to upskill folks, we need to make sure we identify what those right skills are. And they've been casting about. When I say casting about, they've been trying to figure it out for some time. So I don't see it necessarily in terms of more advanced or less advanced. That's not how I, uh, uh, I, I see everybody doing, the, making the same moves. As far as national preparedness, um, and a study came out, uh, ITU, the ITU published a, a global study and actually ranked the Caribbean and Latin America last of the five continents in preparedness for cybersecurity. In Thailand, they had a team. New Zealand, they have a team. Whereas they're looking, he's looking for a team here. That's that's a good point. Yeah. I'd just like to. I don't hear. There you go. Um, So Jamaica's situation with data? I mean, yeah. Okay. Data protection act. Oh, data protection, yes. Yes. Um, yeah, get away from that speaker. Uh, the, uh, yeah, stand over yeah, here. So that act was recently passed. Yeah. Uh, this year, in fact. And I think it's generating some interest. I'll bet. Interest. Interest. Um, as it relates to um, cyber security. Um, I know of a particular individual who um, has stayed on the course um, in cyber security. And I expect um, that more will be generated in this area. Yeah, that, that's how I see it, you know. Well, we saw, you about that. yeah, we saw when they passed, start passing those laws in the United States, all of a sudden you saw a, a, a huge change in attitude by, um, by businesses. Big and time. They, 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 oh, they, they had to. They had to comply. Well, they had to. Yeah. Um, and um, so if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. It was interesting to see at first, like, oh, we have to talk about privacy now. And it was interesting that they eventually realized that in order to get their privacy going, 
they had to get their security ducks in a row first. They had to get the foundational security controls going. Uh, you know, whether that be NIST 800 security controls or uh, CSF or whatever. Uh, and then privacy, you know, comes about after that. Yeah. Uh, but absolutely, regulation, if you take a look at that in the um, uh, cybersecurity report, uh, CompTIA, also if you take a look at it, in the uh, 2022 uh, uh, trends, you'll see that that uh, regulation is definitely driving a lot of education, a lot of interest. Um, one. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the awareness of the public, though, because in terms of them recognizing their own rights. Yes. Um, you see that as, as 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 some kind of enabling factor that why 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 it's all, almost like persons are feeling that they have to do this because now the 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 the, the, the public is now aware. That's right. All right. Yeah. I know one uh, person I was uh, on a hike with, believe it or not, I was in the UK climbing up this hill called, a mountain called Helvellyn, and he did a lot of, most of his revenue came from e-marketing, you know, from, from marketing, and when they passed GDPR, he lost about, for a short time, about 80% of his uh, business or people logging in because they all opted out. Yeah because they saw it as their right. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. And and so he changed his business practices yeah. to become much more targeted. And he was able to win most of that back. Yeah. Yeah. But he did have to change his processes. And he also had to implement quite a bit of more security than, than he realized he had to do. Any any other questions um, from the audience? Anybody with a question? Um, Anybody online with a question? No? All right. All right. So in terms of sort of summarizing or, 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 sure. or um, you know, wrapping up, last thoughts. I'll let you go first, Jay. You know, when it comes to uh, last thoughts, one of the things I think is really important for educators, uh, excuse me, what's really important for um, employers is to realize that they need to address what some people call the work revolution. You call it what you want. Some, it started, I think, with the great resignation or whatever. But as people who are in the workforce, how can you address a larger swath of, of the available workforce? And I think there are creative ways to do that. Also, how can you uh, better assess your workforce and see that assessment not as something that's punitive or well I have to do it as part of a regulation but you're doing it to create more peer-based communication that makes your organization grow and transform people use that term digital transformation there's nothing more transformational to any organization in my experience and I've been around the education industry for over 30 years than education and that's uh, the clever ways that the best and more mature organizations education to keep people's interest and to keep on on uh, target and that's why at CompTIA we have uh, changed a lot of our educational offerings and made them much more uh, hands-on and much more interactive because that's what businesses are looking for. So I'll end with that. Yeah, and I'll just, I'm gonna just add on to that is the paradigm of learning has changed um, for our industry and we've made it change. Um, you still have dinosaurs out there and that's okay. Um, and with this, this new paradigm of learning, Vector, you know, you, you, using what's available to them creates um, a new way to make it feasible, possible, um, strategically um, responsible for business to look into their team development and then for personal strategic development for individuals to, to really consider it. Because right now, the, the, the vector model, no other model like that exists here on the island. It just doesn't exist. And um, they, they have the right certification program and they have the right learning materials and they have an experienced team of instructors. I mean, uh, to me, that's a trifecta um, of learning. In the, same way businesses are, in the same way that businesses are using technology far more deeply than they ever were before COVID, right? Uh, we're seeing now education catch up 
to that and realize that the workforce needs to be better educated as well and much more creatively. Absolutely. And we hope that the next time you guys come along, we'll be talking about our new internship model. All right. All right. All right. So, folks, um, we want to thank you for uh, those online for tuning in. And, uh, of course, uh, the members in the audience for all of those number of questions. And we look forward to to our next time that we, 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 we meet again. All right, so thank you everybody and good night. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, really appreciate it. Thank you.